Hello, welcome to episode 8, and I said that I was going to be doing uh, weapons actually hitting, but I'm actually going to put that off a little bit longer, one more episode, because I realized that I made some mistakes in the last episode, and I wanted to correct them now, and I might as well take that opportunity to, to finish with the weapon uh, uh, targeting system. So, uh, back here in ship, you can see I went and I fetched all of the weapons, and then I added all the weapons, uh, I made them all watch. That's a really bad way to do it. And the, the reason I was thinking about that in the way I was thinking about it is that uh, I was... Excuse me for a second. Hmm. Sorry. Uh, the reason I was thinking about it like that is that I was thinking that weapon was not a mono behavior. I thought that weapon was a standalone class. Um, I'd forgotten that I made it a mono behavior in this particular engine. Because it's a mono behavior, it has a start function and it interacts with everything. So what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be getting the ship related to the weapon rather than the weapons related to the ship. Like so. So if we can find a ship, sign up for it. Uh, so we might as well take this opportunity to put in the public rule is primary. That's true. So this is the same exact result as what we did last time, but um, better structured. And moreover, because we're restructuring it like this, we can go down here, we can rip out these log errors and say... Uh, if primary do that, else, and the same thing. And the reason that we are putting these in brackets rather than saying uh, if primary and on weapon primary fire is because we don't want to fall through to secondary when there's no event for primary. So if you try to, tr try to fi fire your primary weapon and you don't have any, it doesn't fire your secondary weapon instead. Alright, so that should actually have the exact same functionality as it did before, except for it didn't. Uh, events uh, add, you add the events, rather than setting them equal. Yep, so that works fine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an arc of fire. And we're only going to fire if uh, the target is within our arc. like that. So how do we determine an arc of fire? Well down here we're gonna go ahead and create public bool is within arc vector 3 pause because we're gonna need to know is within arc for a wide variety of reasons uh, this is simply the first one. Oh and these can become protected because we no longer need them to be uh, public so we'll just go ahead and hide them so it is within arc. The way we do this is we take our current position and our current heading and we compare it to see whether or not our rotation is less than that amount. So that may sound easy, but it's actually not. Uh, well, it's, it's not difficult either. It's just kind of annoying. 
So the relative to position to us is now the delta, and we need to determine whether our forward arc, transformed out forward, uh, is less than the position, less than the fire arc off of the position. Fortunately, we only have to worry about the x and y, uh, x and z axis. We don't have to worry about the y axis, and because of that, we can just use a standard a tan, like this. And we can actually go ahead and just get the same thing from ourselves. So, who else spotted the bug? Yep, that's right. And that will make sure that if we're at you know 360, uh, you know if we're if we're at 270, it will become 90 degrees off rather than staying 270 degrees off. Uh, and then we can just say if angle delta is oh it's a just return angle delta is less than or equal to uh, uh, what did I name that variable fire arc. There we go. So up here in uh, fire weapon we say if is within arc and pause, uh, even rather if it's not within our arc, then return. Um, actually, if it's not within our arc, cease fire and then return. That means that if we drag it outside of the arc that it's allowed to be in, it will stop firing. So let's go ahead and see whether that works. The 90 degree delta means it should be able to fire... Oh! It's firing way too much. Hold on, let me figure this out. Oh, uh, yeah, the answer is obvious. I didn't even really pause it. I just barely touched the pause button. Uh, the answer is that this is in angles when it needs to be in radians, or more accurately, we need to compare it to radians. Uh, but I'm going to leave it in angles for ease of programming, uh, you know, ease of, of scene view programming, creating new weapon variants. There we are, simply. Oh, wait, actually, I think that it might be a rad 2 degree, degree 2 rad, there it is. So we don't even need to do that math ourselves. Oh, it's just actually a static. There we go. Now show me what you've got, weapon. Perfect. Perfect. So that works great. Let's go ahead and change our dummy weapon so that it has a 45 degree fire arc instead of a 90 degree fire arc. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. So now what we've done is we've made our weapons a little bit more robust and we've implemented our firing arcs. Firing arcs are a core part of play because you're going to need to balance where your shields are heavy, where your shields are light, where you can hit and where you can't hit. Um, and it should be quite interesting. So one of the things we still have to do is create uh, a field of fire wedge um, for the user to see the arc of fires for each of their weapons. Uh, we're not going to do that this episode. In fact, we're probably not going to do that for quite a few episodes. Um, but it, we, it is coming. There will be an overlay. Uh, it's just that in order to do that, we actually need to create a mesh of that shape uh, programmatically because there's no real easy way to do it with an image and there's no real easy way to do it with a uh, uh, with anything else. Um, so uh, uh, I'm not going to do mesh creation this episode and not ep next episode either. Next episode will be the art of blowing people up.